Hey, welcome back, and thanks for tuning in and watching the Cypress Sports Show, brought to you, of course, by Coach's Corner, your go-to spot before and after the game. I'm Jeff Russell here with Mark Slovkove. Today we talk to Washington Commander's assistant linebacker coach and Cypress alumni, Bug Rivera. We're going to get a quick check on this week's opponent with Coach Crooks, and of course, Mr. Sean Pfeiffer's Would You Rather segment. I'd love to tell you what it is, but I'm sure it's already changed since then. So, Coach, <laughs> We have football off and rolling last week. We got Catherine Gerbing still in the individual uh, golf championships uh, in CIF. So far, so good. I know you got the rundown, but that's quite an accomplishment for Catherine to start off. Uh, it's a great accomplishment. Uh, she she barely survived last week. She didn't have her greatest round, but her her poor round is still good enough to advance, and, and she has a chance now to go to uh, the CIF state finals in Pebble Beach next week. She's gonna. It's gonna take a great round on Thursday for her to advance. But we had a girl last year, Kristen Legaspi, that was able to do it, uh, who got caught fire at the right time, and uh, Catherine certainly capable of that. Uh, football team second round uh, is gonna be an exciting game Friday night, and then when we get to Bug, man, Bug was fun to watch in high school, wasn't he? Oh my God, he's one of the best that we've had here, and super fun to watch. Uh, for sure. Real quick, going back to uh, to Catherine before we get to Bug and, and the update. Are we all going to chaperone that if she gets to Pebble Beach? I think it's a no-brainer. I think we put it on the AUHSD account and Absolutely. Uh, we head up there. The district's paying for sure. All right, well, what do we got here? All right, the football team defeated Rio Mesa of Oxnard 50-24 to in the first round of the CIF Division Six playoffs last Friday night at Handel Stadium. Aiden Houston had a big game running the ball, throwing the ball, spreading it around. Uh, Jesse Malden balled out. And little Matthew Baldonado, man, that guy is a spark plug. Just been so impressed with him. Uh, week in, week out, another strong performance on special teams. I think he had a 50-yard uh, return. The guy's a stud. Just always seems to be in the right place at the right time. Next up is Miracosta at Miracosta on Friday night. Hopefully the students are done grinding Fortnite that came out last week and uh, they can make it out to the game this week. It is a non-student day, um, so hopefully uh, we'll see them. And we got, you know, last week with Sean Haylock, he was, he, I can't imagine he's happy. He was very specific about there's no way that the three and seven team should be in the playoffs and here they are winning. And now we get to play that, well, now four and seven team or whatever they are, right, uh, in the second round. So uh, Rashawn might have a little bias in, in the South Bay. Maybe. <laughs> All right, uh, girls tennis uh, lost in the second round of the Division II playoffs to Temecula Valley 10-8 to on Friday. Coach Pauls, though, girls went 19-4 and on the season, a share of the league championship, and they still have individ individuals for CIF in a couple of weeks. Nice season, girls and Coach Paul. Girls golf, as you mentioned, uh, had three members play in the CIF finals last week, Brooke Sato, Tanya Maheshwari, and Catherine Gerbing. Catherine played well enough uh, to see another day, and she qualified for the CIF SCGA Southern California Championship this Thursday. Today, when you're watching this, she'll be teeing off at Los Serranos in Chino Hills. If she plays great today, she can qualify for the CIF State Finals next week up in Pebble Beach. And our cross country team competed in the Empire League Finals last week at Craig Park. The girls finished in fifth place in league and the boys a solid third place in league. Congratulations to Jonathan Rodriguez and Elliot Yee for taking, uh, for making the all-league team after their performance. The boys continue on to Team CIF prelims at Mount Sac on Saturday. Good luck to Coach Tweed and the fellas. All right, well, hey, a lot of stuff going on. Uh, with that, let's take a quick look and check in with uh, Coach Crooks on this week's game and get the rundown and the breakdown of Maricosta. All right, here we are back with Coach Crooks, headed into uh, CIF second round coming up Friday night versus Maricosta. After last Friday night's 50 to 24 victory over Rio Mesa, Coach, what was the key to putting up 50 points on Rio Mesa? Well, it's just our offense. Our offense had a great day. They had about 300 yards total offense of rushing, 
and um, Aiden Houston showed up like he normally does every game, and Jesse Maldon did a great job of also running the ball hard and the tackles and stuff to extend the chain. So it was a good um, overall offensive performance. And then defense did well by doing key stops at certain times of the games and getting some turnovers, which led to points. Tell us about Matthew Baldonado. That guy is Mr. Steady Eddie, Mr. Consistency, uh, special teams, defensively. Uh, how much of a key is, is that guy? Well, the kid's special. I mean, you look at him in his size and you want to pick on him as an offensive corner because how small he is as a corner, but he just always finds the ball and always is in the right area at the right time and makes great tackles uh, when needed. And you know, and does a great job on special teams by um, returning kicks for us and punt returns and stuff. So he does a, a great job for us and he's a special player. All right, this week, round two, we head out to Miracosta and Manhattan Beach. Uh, what do we expect to see from the Mustangs uh, Friday night? We'll we expect them to be physical. They have a, a good uh, size offensive line. They average from 6'2 to 6'7. So it's probably gonna be one of the biggest offense lines we've faced. Uh, we're looking at common opponents that they have done. Uh, really not much, but just league-wise, I mean, they played uh, they had a juggernaut schedule in the beginning of the year, playing San Juan Hills and Villa Park, and at one point, those in Palos Verdes up there, at one point, those teams were all undefeated. Uh, and, and, you know, but they're a tough physical team. Um, their defense is fast and physical and stuff, so it's it's round two. It's, you know, we're both 1-0, and and we're trying to get to that next week. That's right. Miracosa lost their first seven games of the season before winning four in a row here. Um, in terms of score Friday night, are we going to see a, a defensive battle or are the offense is going to be able to break it open and score in the 40s again? I, I see a team that, you know, if all three phases are working, we could see another game like that we did last week. If not, it's going to be a tough grind. And in between the tackles, uh, we just, we've been challenging our offensive line and defense line this week of winning in the trenches. And that's our goal is winning the trenches to come out with the victory. All right, Coach, thank you very much and good luck Friday night. Thank you. All right, thanks, Coach Crooks. Appreciate that uh, that breakdown for us. Now it is time to bring in and see if he remembers his topic, Mr. Pfeiffer, in our subs and grubs segment. Would you rather, Sean? Do you remember this week's topic? If so, what is it? <laughs> uh, I would rather. Yeah, I, I do. I remember it. I remember it. I remember it. Would you rather uh, win the trophy, get that big prize, right? Medal hanging on the wall. Mom's proud of you forever. Or would you rather get the cash prize, right? So it's kind of interesting. I was I was expecting students to want that memorabilia, want that stuff. Do you guys know the oldest stuff you have in your house? What are the awards that just kind of stick around that you can't get rid of, or maybe they're in a box in the garage? What do you What do you guys think? What's a trophy? What's the oldest trophy or certificate? Uh, well, or? I had I had this big yeah. six foot trophy from Little League World Series. It was pretty awesome. Yeah, right. But couldn't hold on to it forever so I broke it down and there was a nice plaque on it so I kept the plaque yeah. but the rest of the trophy has gone bye bye has gone yep. yeah has I gone. think pictures and, and maybe a certificate or something someplace yeah right the certificates those things right uh, eventually it becomes too much for uh, ballers like you guys right Tro <laughs> trophies <laughs> need an extra room, room a trophy yeah, room I right? got no room for that stuff anyway here's what we found out talked to some staff members talked to some kids here's what they said Cypress High School, Coach Fall. Tennis champion, yes, check it out, CIF today, Coach Akula. Cheer and song, check it out. Would you rather get an award for a season well played, right? Victory, here's your thing, nice trophy, huge trophy, or get a cash prize. Cash prize. Cash Victory. prize. Cash prize? Yes. How much, how much, how much? What's the, what's, the, what's the minimum CIF championship? I don't know, whatever they're willing to give. Five bucks? No, like a hundred bucks. Cash prize. How big is the trophy and how much is the cash prize? It's either cash or a trophy, dude. Make a choice. Cash. Cash? Yeah. You selfish. Oh, dang, dude. <laughs> a trophy? Uh, I say trophy. Trophy? I say trophy. Oh. Trophy? <laughs> so you're the only selfish one, right? <laughs> What's the oldest trophy you have at home? Um, I have one from when I used to play soccer. It was like when I was like eight and it's first place. AYSO first place, right? Red, white, and blue? Oh, wow, so that's good. I'd actually, actually rather have the trophy in the middle because it stays for a long time. Oh, it's for other people, right? It gets yeah. you remembering yeah. it, yeah. fond memories? Yeah. Oldest trophy, award, medal? Probably from like dance competitions, like sixth grade. Sixth grade dance? Yeah, I don't remember. Nothing. It would probably be like a small trophy I got from like cheer, like a cheer competition or something. I actually have a trophy that 
in when I was playing in eighth grade, we won the state in soccer. Is so it I, dusty? Well, it's really dusty, and I thought it was uh, this big, but since I got older, it's about this big now. Oh, very cool. <laughs> All right, well, thanks again, Mr. Pfeiffer. It's always fun to watch that segment. Today, we are excited to welcome Cypress alumni and Washington Commander's assistant linebacker coach, Vincent. We don't use that too much as Cypress, but <laughs> Bug Rivera to the program. Thanks for being here. I oh, appreciate you guys having me, man. It's uh, definitely a blessing to be on back on uh, Cypress's airwaves, you know? <laughs> That's awesome. It's great seeing you. Real quick, for those, how do we get the nickname Bug? Oh, man. Uh, my mom gave me that nickname when I was a baby. Um, I used to crawl with my butt in the air like a stink bug. So they called me stink bug for a good amount of time. And luckily, as I started getting older, they dropped the stink and it was just bug. And that's all I've been ever called. So people, I, I rarely hear Vincent today. So it's, it's bug. <laughs> yeah, I, I felt weird saying Vincent, quite honestly. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Nobody calls me that. Nobody. <laughs> Well, you graduated uh, from Cypress back in uh, 2012, seems like uh, forever ago, um, right? People say, you know, Friday Night Lights, uh, you know, football in high school is such a great memory of people that played. Uh, yeah. Do you agree it's such a great memory? And do you remember, like, your your favorite football memory in the playoffs when mm -hmm. you were here? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's funny when you're, when you're young, like I was back in the day, uh, you always have older people telling you, like, oh, man, remember these times, you're, you're going to cherish them, you're going to wish you can go back. And when you're young, you don't think about it. You know, you're, you're living in the moment, young and dumb. Um, but now looking back, and as I'm starting to get old, I'm like, man, I, I really miss those times being out there with, you know, some of my best friends who I still keep in touch with uh, till this day, building those memories and kind of the foundation and building block for the rest of my life. Um, those Friday night nights were, were fun, a, a lot of fun for me. Um, everybody knows I'm a big sports guy. I've always been my whole life. And uh, those games on Friday nights, you really can't beat the feeling. Um, being out there at Handel Stadium, I believe that's the name, right? Yeah, Handel Stadium, making all those memories. I remember looking up. I still have a vivid memory of, like, looking up at the stands and uh, just kind of seeing everybody cheering. You know, we're starting to get on a roll uh, in my time. And uh, being able to see my parents up there with their big signs, as they always had, um, was really, really uh, encouraging for me. And um, playoffs was in a whole nother level, you know. Um, I remember my first real playoff game because I played a, a playoff game my freshman year, but um, my real playoff game was my sophomore year. We played La Habra and that atmosphere was just absolutely insane. It's kind of like my first uh, taste of it, you know, a taste of a big game. Um, and it was just a lot of fun being there with your brothers. You know, uh, some people didn't think that we'd, uh, you know, fare well with them. And uh, we, we had a really tough game. I, 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 Still think about that game probably every night before bed. Uh, the same one of my senior year, we played a uh, foothill um, over there in Tustin or wherever. Um, but yeah, it was just it's just an amazing experience, win or lose. Um, coming together, you know, it's a, it's a long season. It's a, it's a long season from the summer all the way until um, you know the, the winter. And we we're playing some really good football. Um, but to see all of our work kind of pay off and get to the playoffs was was definitely uh, a good feeling, to say the least. <laughs> That's right. I remember that La Habra game. Uh, that was a tough one for sure. It was exciting. Yeah. That yeah. field, you're right on. The fans are right on top of you. There's no track. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you were you were just the the young sophomore out there trying to keep up with AK, uh, yeah. who had a, who had a great game and a great season. Uh, and then by the time you were a senior, oh man, you had a phenomenal, phenomenal junior and especially senior year. I think it was 38 yeah. touchdowns, over 1,500 <laughs> yards rushing. You were running uh, returns and, and all sorts of stuff, uh, league yeah. MVP, yeah. all CIF, uh, yeah. quite the accomplishments for our program. Uh, and as you said, we were on a roll at that time. Uh, then you got into coaching. You started at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Grunt work, <laughs> is it, in the quality control coach? Uh, and I guess oh, yeah. in the NFL, like in life, uh, nothing is given to you. Uh, mm -hmm. You have to earn what uh, what you get and, and your job. How did you tackle that? Uh, how tough of a job is the quality control coach, your first job in the NFL? Uh, what does that look like on a daily basis? Yeah, a lot of people don't really know that part of uh, football or as far as like the coaching side. Um, but it's really like an entry level position. So um, it was my first job and it's exactly what it sounds like. It's, it's 
making sure that everything's okay. Um, you know, you're doing all of the grunt work. You're there long hours, um, kind of with, I mean, you get a pat on the back here and there, but people don't know that you're putting in so much work um, in order for the guys, you know, above you, the coordinators, the position coaches, to be able to get their job done, right? So um, spending hours breaking down film uh, for the next opponent, you know, you always got to be a week ahead. You got to make sure uh, kind of everything's in the right spot so things can go seamlessly because the long season, it's seven days a week. People don't realize there's no day off uh, for coaches. Um, so you always got to be ahead, got to be ready, got to be on point. Um, but it, it was a it was a really good experience starting from there. And I, I know some people have the opportunity to kind of skip that part, but it really allowed me to learn from the ground up kind of how everything works. Um, I'm seeing a lot more plays than, you know, most people see, like I'm, I'm seeing everything pretty much. So it was a really good learning experience for me. Um, at the time, it seemed like a lot. <laughs> it seemed like definitely like maybe too much, um, but I'm glad that I grinded through it and, and then it really helped me get to where I am right now. Would you, would you attribute um, uh, your athletic experience in terms of the daily grind of practicing and training to, to work where it's, it's, a long season, you got to focus each and every day and you got to show up every day and good things are going to happen in the future for you. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's a different kind of strain from player to coach, right? Uh, players, it's a, a lot of a lot of mental, but it's also a lot of physical, right? And then uh, as a coach, obviously, you're not playing anymore, but it's, a, it's that mental grind of you have to be on your on point uh, all throughout the week. You know, it, it's nonstop because you have to be there for your players. And I remember being a player and the number one important thing for me was I wanted to be prepared. Like I wanted to be the most prepared I could be every time I stepped out on the field because I didn't want any, any sort of surprises. You know, I, I wanted to put my best foot forward and I thought the preparation uh, was going to lead me there. Right. So I, that's what I attribute a lot of my success to uh, as well as having a lot of good coaches. I had a lot of good role model, models um, from the beginning and that attribute to Cyprus. Um, you know, people always talk about, you know, the discipline of it and, ask anybody on those teams or those former coaches, the coaches that are still there, Coach Feldman, Coach Crooks, um, you know, those guys really laid the foundation for me, Coach Colby, Coach Fenton, um, about discipline, you know, being on point um, from start to beginning. And that's, I've been, I've been fortunate enough to be around some good coaches. My parents, uh, you know, the head coach here, uh, always uh, instilling in me that do the right thing and good things will come, you know. Yeah, coaching uh, now with, with your uncle, and uh, I know you, uh, back when you started with quality control, you, you coached with Luke Del Rio. He was a, a quality control guy as well, and his dad is Jack Del Rio, the, the defensive coordinator. And uh, I hear you guys used to get out on the field early, do some racing, some interval training. Tell me at least you beat those guys every time. Oh, yeah, without question. I was in a different league than those guys. They're, they're, they're has-beens, they're – old quarterbacks you know they don't know about the grind <laughs> of running but yeah no we'd get out there and work out anytime uh we got some extra time we're throwing the ball around and playing you know pickup games or working out so it, it's definitely a lot of fun <laughs> that's funny so the soft quarterbacks didn't have a chance but when, when you're running there I mean mm -hmm. did you think to yourself like I can play with these guys over here or these like pro guys on the offensive <laughs> side oh yeah I still think that to this day I, I tell <laughs> I tell my players like hey well, we got one uh, linebacker in particular who thinks he's faster than me, and I'm like, there's no shot. And I, like, to this day, I'm like, I know I'm not working out as hard as I used to, but there's no way uh, you'd ever beat me in a race. I tell these guys, like, hey, I'm probably the most athletic guy in this room, and they always give me crap. <laughs> but uh, I like to keep them on their toes, you know. But, uh, yeah, I, I definitely think I can still play with some of these guys. <laughs> nice. nice. So I think you're in your, your fourth year now with the Washington Commanders. You're now the assistant linebacker coach. But you were an offensive guy. You were yeah. a running back, slot receiver in high school and college. Um, yeah. How have you adapted from and learned the defensive side of the ball uh, from being an offensive guy uh, throughout your career? Yeah, so I definitely have a different perspective um, than most people, I guess. Um, but football is football. I, it was hard for me at first, I'll, I'll be honest, um, because all I ever knew was offense, you know, and then the extent of defense that I knew was very base level, you know. Um, so I would say that that first year was a bit of a learning curve for me where I really had to dive in, you know, to the material and learn the ins and outs of kind of everything. 
um, that's why I am fortunate to have that um, quality control position to start off because it allowed me to learn, you know, the ins and outs of everything, how, how it works from top to bottom um, on the defense side of the ball. Um, but yeah, I, I'm fortunate, I think, to have uh, the experience of both, you know, playing offense my entire life, you know, a little bit of defense here and there, um, and then diving into the defensive side of coaching um, because I think I can see the game a little bit different. You know, I, I see the intent of the offense a little bit more. Um, and and it, it's, it's only helped me um, to where I'm at now. So I'm definitely fortunate to have both sides of it. Um, I don't know. I actually don't know where I want to end up, you know, because I'm still an offensive guy at heart right? through and through. I think I always will be. Um, but I, I, I do enjoy my time here on the defense, seeing the different side of the football and kind of the different attitudes that they have here on defense. Defense is, in my opinion, 10 times harder, a million times harder than offense. So. Um, I'll give them their 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 credit there, um, but yeah, I'm I'm fortunate for the position that I'm in, no doubt. Yeah, very cool. Well, yeah, you said long days, hard work in that position, but now you put in that time, you mm -hmm. gained some experience to get to where you are now as the assistant linebacker coach. What would you tell the athletes at Cyprus to help them when you know things get tough? Maybe they're ready to give up and and they mm -hmm. don't see that that benefit later on, what advice would you give them? And maybe what advice would, would you have given yourself if you were in still in high school? Yeah. Um, there's always going to be tough times. You know, they, people always talk about how uh, football and sports in general is um, like a metaphor for life. You know, there, there's always going to be tough times. Um, I mean, shoot, we're dealing with a, a few tough times, a few tough games uh, this season, but it, it, you know, it's no, some people look for an excuse to kind of back down and give up, but um I think the community that you build is always going to help you. So I think if you, you know, keep a good company around you and sometimes when you don't feel like putting your best foot forward, somebody will give you a little push, you know, and that's what our job is here as coaches to do. Um, but yeah, always trying to stick things through. Um, you know, you can always make your decision at the end, but you never want to miss out on an opportunity, good opportunity. Um, and some advice that I would give myself is always, you know, um, man, okay, take care of your body. People, people don't, I think there's a lot more information about it now, um, but do, doing absolutely all that you can for recovery, um, especially in football, because it's a grueling game. Uh, as, as you can see on TV every uh, Saturday and Sunday, it's, it's a grueling game, an unforgiving game. So being able to take care of your body, do the right things. Um, when you're young, you think you have all the answers, but really uh, relying on whether it be an older mentor or older person on the team or somebody who's done it, um, I would always heed their advice, um, to, to, obviously, when they're trying to help you, um, to, to help you put that best foot forward. So I, I, I pride myself on when I was younger. I mean, I was always the younger guy in the room, even at Cyprus, um, you know, being a freshman, playing with varsity, um, to always be a sponge, taking as much information as you can um, to help you become a better, well-rounded person or athlete, you know. Well, Bug, how did you, um, how did you, you played multiple sports in high school and football track, you played some baseball as well. Um, mm -hmm. How was being a multiple sport athlete um, and training in multiple areas? How did that help you uh, grow as an athlete and, and a person? Yeah, I, I think, I think it's kind of getting lost on today's, uh, I'll say youth, I'm sounding like an old person too. Um, but being, being a well-rounded athlete is only going to help, man. Um, because there's, there's different things you take from each sport, you know, to make you a better athlete, like we'll, even like returning punts. So I re always return punts in a high school, college. Um, but it's just like catching a fly ball, you know, being out there in center field, catching a fly ball. It's a skill that is um, appreciated here at this level, at the top level, because people will be on teams just to catch punts because it's, it's not an easy thing to do. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I think, athletes today should always um, try and get the most out of themselves. And I think you do that by putting yourself in uncomfortable positions, uh, playing other sports, you know what I mean? Playing football, playing baseball, basketball, track, whatever it may be, water polo, you know, you're, you're building a different um, callousness to your muscles and um, putting yourself in different positions that you might not uh, always be in. Like say for football, you're doing kind of the same things going forward. Now, you're in baseball, you're doing different movements, you know, different, uh, working a different part of your body and working your mental as well. You're learning more things. You're uh, un understanding how to adapt. That's, 
that's kind of one of the biggest things we talk about here in coaching is you always want to get your players to be problem solvers. You know, it's not just, hey, do this, run through this brick wall, just do this. It's no, it's, is it going to be a problem on the field? You got to adapt the best way you can. And I think being a well-rounded person, being a well-rounded athlete is going to help you with that. Yeah, very nice. Well, head coach uh, Rivera had said one time in an interview uh, regarding you coaching with him, right? Because family and, and so on. But he said what I thought was a really cool statement. He said he thought it was a good thing because – you can be very honest with him when maybe other coaches wouldn't be right there. Like, oh, uh, but because you have that other relationship, he felt you could be very honest. So how important is that communication in coaching? And then what can our players learn about communication that'll help them be more confident? Yeah, I think uh, the player and coach relationship is always going to be paramount. You know, when you're talking about uh, from, from that perspective, but it's also important coaches to coaches, you know, um, you always want to have people around you you can trust and rely on to tell you the truth or tell you uh, to not hold back and what they're seeing, right? And fortunate enough, I've known the head coach for freaking 29 years now. So I, I, I pull no punches when, you know, talking to him and, and he relies on me to do that, you know, and that's the good relationship we have, but it, you don't have to be related to someone to have that relationship. So having that relationship with, uh, amongst your coaches is always, always going to be a benef uh, benefit, be positive. And then from players to coaches, building that relationship is so important, right? Um, I think that's something I'm realizing more now. Um, but I've always had good relationship with my coaches. Um, being able to, you know, talk to them about what I'm seeing or how I like how I'm how I'm seeing the game, how I can feel I can impact it. Um, always give me feedback of how what I can do better, and and not having, not not getting sensitive about it. I always trusted them to tell me the truth because ultimately is going to help me. You know, we're all here for the same goal. We're all trying to win. We're always trying to put our best foot forward. We're always trying to get the most success that we can. So um, having a good relationship with your coach is always going to help that because we're on the same, we're on the same team, right? Like people forget that from time to time that we're all on the same team. Coaches are never doing anything to, you know, hinder you. So have an open mind, listen to them and, you know, try not to be sensitive. <laughs> That's what I was taught. All right, so relationships. Let's talk about uh, uh, relationships when you were in high school and, and with uh, – we, we had two guys that have NFL experience now. Jamil Douglas was a yeah. senior your sophomore year, and you're mm -hmm. coaching in the NFL. Were you guys close back then in high school? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I still talk to Jamil, you know, here and there. Uh, when he was playing and I was coaching, I'd see him, you know, on the other sideline. So, uh, I, actually, he was with us for um, – he was with us for – a good half of the season too. So I got to see him again. Um, but I was, I was always grateful for Jamil, you know, um, something that's important to me that I'm learning is that you always want to like try and bring people with you. Right. And when I was the young guy in the room, Jamil would always, you know, talk me up to other coaches, you know, people that were coming in for recruiting visits, he would always talk me up and kind of bring me around. So I was always fortunate, you know, to have that. And I was always thankful for Jamil because he, he was a good mentor, a good role model to have um, in sports. So I'm always appreciative of that. Uh, it's good. I'm so glad that he had uh, the success that he did, you know, and uh, that's why that, those those uh, bonds you make are, are important and they, they, they help you out. They really do. Yeah, you guys spend a lot of time together uh, as a team in high school. I can only imagine uh, in college in the NFL, it's a whole, whole nother level. Um, so yeah. really, really neat, really neat. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, hey, we've come to the point in the program where we do this thing called fast action questions. We got a few of them for you. Don't overthink any of them. Just answer whatever comes to your mind. You ready? All right. Sounds good. Funniest coach you ever played for? Oh, man. Uh, ooh. Coach Feldman was uh, sneaky funny. He was very sneaky funny. <laughs> All right. Going out. Shout out to Coach Feldman. Funniest player that you ever coached? Oh, my gosh. Um, I'll say uh, Cole Luke I had in uh, Carolina. He was, he was a funny dude. <laughs> nice. Favorite restaurant in Cyprus? Ooh, favorite restaurant in Cyprus. Uh, ooh, I'd have to say Albert Taco just because I haven't had it in so long. <laughs> that, that, I think that was the same answer Jamil gave. That was, really? that was Jamil's answer for sure. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> so yeah. like, what, what was the last time you were there? Oh my gosh. I, I, man, maybe like a decade ago, I, it feels like, because I haven't, I haven't been back to Cyprus too much, unfortunately. So All Albert right. tacos or, or fish in a bottle was always a, a, a plus for me. Fish in a bottle <laughs> as well. Shout out. Yeah. Loud, yeah. Loudest, loudest stadium that you've coached in. Oh, um, probably New Orleans, I want to say, that at that, they should call it the Superdome. It gets loud in there. <laughs> nice. What's it like to come out of the tunnel on a Sunday? Uh, it's the best feeling. Yeah, honestly, it's the best feeling. That's my short answer. Uh, always where I wanted to be, so I'm very fortunate. You graduated with a degree in film and media studies. Any chance mm -hmm. we're going to see a film from you someday? What would it be called if we did? <laughs> uh, yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully when I'm all done with this football stuff, I, that's what I'll go into and shoot, maybe I'll make a biopic called The Bug's Life, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> well, last question, long days as a coach, you, you gotta love coffee now, right? Mm, absolutely. I didn't drink any coffee before I started coaching and now it's however many cups a day. <laughs> there you go. What's, what is the go-to coffee for you? Regular, uh, well, cappuccino, yeah. what do you get? Yeah, so some days I'm feeling rough. Uh, I'll definitely spice it up and get a cappuccino or something like that. But we have a Starbucks machine in here. So uh, every day it's just uh, a nice black coffee <laughs> just to get me going. Starbucks, man. Come on, what's the best coffee shop that you've been to? It can't be Starbucks. No. Um, there's a small, I'm forgetting the name now, but there's a small coffee shop in Berkeley, California that I would always uh, – go to study there, you know, study, go to study there with the people. I didn't drink coffee at the time, uh, but we would always go there. And then I went back and I had a first coffee there and it was, it was one of the best coffees I ever had. I, I, I can't remember the name. I got, I'll, I'll send it to you guys. They don't, uh, they don't serve, they don't serve coffee at Top Dog in Berkeley. <laughs> Top Dog, yeah. No coffee at Top Dog in Berkeley. <laughs> I guarantee you. <laughs> That's funny that you know that. That's crazy. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, hey, thanks again to Bug Rivera. We appreciate you being here, um, taking the time out to talk to us. Yeah, absolutely, man. I, I appreciate you guys having me. It's good to see you guys. It's been it's been so long. <laughs> I'm finally feeling like I'm getting old. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks again. And thanks, thanks to our sponsors, Subs and Grubs and Coaches Corner. Make sure everybody gets out there, support those businesses for supporting us. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you all next week.